All right, guys, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Carlos Garcia. I'm the founder and CEO of Gar Capital. Here is the market recap of the week. Let's go over their trades. Let's go over what we have open, what worked today, what didn't work today. Kind of get a feel of how the week went. What could we have changed? What could we have done better? Of course, it's always important to review uh, everything that you do, all the work that you do uh, pretty much on a weekly basis. Every day is kind of tough since we know that the option market does move, the stock market is pretty volatile. So again, kind of do this, do yourself a favor, uh, do it every week where you can actually take a look at your trade, see where you're going, see how you did, and some of the things that you can change. Uh, this is why you record everything. Uh, if you don't write it down, how you know? Uh, how do you know if you're gonna get better? And that's kind of the important way. I, I always use the analogy of sports, you know? You know, if you work out at the gym or anything like that, uh, you're going to be the type of person that needs to write down your sets, um, you know, progressive overload, stuff like that, where you're trying to add more weight to get stronger. Same thing with any kind of sport, you know, you're going to shoot the ball X amount of times to make a certain amount of percent in, or if you're in baseball, so on and so forth. So uh, trading is no different in that sense. So um, it is important to do these videos. I like doing them with you guys uh, because it's for those individuals who are not part of the team yet, maybe they're still on the fence, but they want to see exactly how we do things. And, um, kind of show kind of the methodology how we do it. And of course, for the Discord members who are watching, again, it's important to review everything as always. Uh, the Watches and Charts channel on the Discord channel. Again, I always give the updates on everything. So again, if I missed anything, feel free to tag me on the server. Uh, if you are a um, masterclass or a premium member, I'd be more than happy to help you guys with any kind of questions you may have. Uh, basic chat as well, if they have any questions. Uh, but the uh, the... So far, the blog, I mean, pretty quiet. Um, we sent out a couple things, but uh, really just playing reaction and reversals. That's what we've been doing. And so far, it's been working. Pretty great week. So let's start with um, the day. Uh, the Dow closed down 143 points. NASDAQ fell about 0.35%. S&P down 0 0.21, 4137. And the volatility index closed about 4% to the downside at 1707. So let's go over the trades of the week. Um, we had So pretty much it was perfect this week, except for Tesla. And Tesla was the one that we had to carry over for last week. That pretty much melted down right off the rip. And then we were hoping that CPI would give us a little nudge. I was tracking it. At best, we got to minus 91%. Um, the only thing different, obviously, if I knew what I knew now, I would have salvaged it at minus 80, minus 85 back last week. But uh, we didn't just we didn't get a bump on Tesla. Tesla uh, headlines were basically the same. Cutting prices and the price action wasn't the best on Tesla. Uh, that's just kind of the reality. Uh, that was the one loss that we had. But again, it was a carryover. Just pretty ugly price action. We got to the bottom on Monday. We bounced back rather quickly. Figuring that we can get some momentum. We got to the top at 191.50. But the damage was already done pretty much the Monday before. Uh, and then we tanked again. We were looking for that gap fill. It, it just didn't happen. Uh, kind of kills me on that one. Um, because I've had seen stocks that do bounce back even down about 80, 85%, Alibaba, Tesla being one of them. So again, again, a little bit of hopium there, but uh, at that point, those premiums were already hit. We were just trying to look to salvage anyways. Didn't happen, so I closed at minus, uh, closed minus 99%, basically. Uh, the next trade we had was Mara. So Mara was a good one. Uh, again, kind of the thesis. I put that video up on YouTube for you guys. If you're an investment club member, you know this. We've talked about the dollar being down, and that's going to help Bitcoin. We talked about on the morning note, uh, that 30,000 level, actually 25,000 on Bitcoin. And again, above that 30,000 level, we would get a little more traction, a little more demand. Marathon Digital, Riot, Coinbase, those kind of guys are going to be the ones that are that proxy. So we did the $10 calls for Masterclass uh, actually this week. I believe it was on Tuesday. So if we bring up the, two, the actual yearly chart, you can see that we were playing that 200-day moving average, playing that support. We got to 10. We held. I, I actually closed it on... Uh, let me see exactly what I got on this one. Let's see. Here is master class only. Here we go. Here we go. I got out at 63%. You can see it right there, the $10 calls. I sent this on master class. Again, the breakdown was rather simple. Uh, again, playing that 200-day moving average, uh, 1478 is the next resistance. Maybe the CPI nukes the dollar. It did. And soars. Bitcoin catches some, some bags, and it did. Uh, Want to swing for the fences uh, here if Bitcoin gets squeezed higher, so we bought some time. Uh, we bought this on the 11th. Um, but again, we had this for the next week. Um, with that being said, this one was for the 21st. So again, this is for next week anyways. We got in the money. 
And then I closed it for around around 60. We got to 37, but I closed it. I told him 41%. I took it at 63. And then we got as high as we got a bag on that. Uh, 125 on masterclass. I think it got as high as 200. Um, I may be wrong on that one. So I'll make sure to send that out. Let me see if I have that screenshot. Um, let me see. Did I get that on masterclass? Uh, 100%. Let's see. Let's see if I have that here this morning. Yeah, this was it. This was 200%. Okay, now you guys can see it here. I just uploaded it. And you can see we got 200% on Mara. That's where I closed right when we got to, I believe right when we broke 12, that's when I closed it and I said, I'm done. I was telling uh, Market Chat about that, but a great trade for Masterclass. I'm glad they caught that. And then I pivoted and actually sent that over to the Premium Signals Group. And again, pretty much the same setup. Uh, we talked about that breakdown, uh, that, uh, that actual breakout. So let's go to watches and charts. We can take a look at that chart again. Uh, let's see here on Mara. Here we go. Again, going technicals here. We traded the calls yesterday with Masterclass with the, the 200. We had the confirmation of the move higher. The target is 11, but the possibility was 12. So again, if we get the over the weekend bid. So we just got it a little ahead of time. Look where we were at this point when we sent it. It was at $10.45 uh, on this trade, on the actual stock. Uh, if you look at the daily, we got as high as $12.28. So um, the only thing, obviously, I wish I could take back was that I could have held it for a little more. Uh, but again, at, at that point, guys, it, profit is profit. I mean, you can hold it, of course. It could always soar. But this market can flip on a dime, and that's where we want to take it. Uh, let me see if I can get it here, this merit trade. Uh, that was the cues. Here you go, 40%. There's your merit trade, 41%. And then I closed my runner at 112% or so. Um, I think it got to 120. Um, so again, right when we broke to 12, I remember market chat here. This is the premium market. They were asking me if I wanted to take the runner. If you have the runner, it's still a great setup. I think it's still green right now. It's at $11.97, so it's still green. Uh, maybe we get some bids overnight on Bitcoin. And if anything, guys, we can always get back into Marathon, Mara, because we still have this resistance here right around $14.80. So maybe we get above uh, overnight, maybe we get a little bit of a boost in the morning, on a Monday morning, and then we pull back and give us an opportunity to go in. Um, as long as we stay above 12, I think we should be okay to get to the 1480. Or again, if anything, if you wanna be a little more conservative, wait for 13, and that's completely fine. Uh, no need to double dip on Mara, even though I did, but still, I thought it was a great setup and I'm glad we played it. Um, the other one here that we set up was Q's. Now this one was a little more tricky. Uh, the reason I say it was a little more tricky is because uh, it was a very choppy move and we did it on a Wednesday. We got right at the top same day and then we tanked literally right on that Wednesday. Uh, so I believe, let me see if I can get that signal here. So we're going to go to premium signals. It was sent out QQQ. QQQ was sent out the 12th. So that was a Wednesday. That was right at 11.29 a.m. And this is where we sense it right here. And then we played all the way up to 316.66. The only reason we got this trade is because it was same week expiry. Even though we got it on a Wednesday, it was expiring today. So again, we got up pretty much at the highs. I told everyone to get out at 34%, but it got to 43% at its highs. And then that's where it tanked. You can see right here, 111 PM. And 111 PM is right here at the peak. Right there, 111 PM. See, 1.11 p.m. Let me see if I can go to the five minute. And the reason I wanna look at this chart is the fact that I wanna make sure that was the top. Maybe we got lucky. Uh, right there, that's pretty much it. At, right at 3.16.22, literally nine minutes later, we tanked. I'm not gonna sit here and say that I'm, uh, you know, I, I read the future, that was pure luck. But again, the reason I'm reiterating this, guys, is look how quick that flipped. Again, right at that 34%, what was that, 43% at the peak. Again, take those profits. Don't fight yourself for about five points. Just take it. Who cares, man? That's money in your pocket. And look what happened. And look, it took all this time. Who knows where those contracts closed because they did not get in the money. We closed at 319.10. So, and again, that was expiring for this week. That's why I wanted to make sure to catch that. My God, a pretty lucky move to catch that, 
to get out at the right time. The next we had it was Meta, the 225 calls, uh, 421. Another situation where we got out pretty much at the right time. But again, it did bounce, so I can't really be too upset. I don't know if it got 40, but uh, here's the breakdown on Meta. To 225 calls at 182. This was sent at 940 in the morning. Uh, this is where we closed at 1045 this morning. We closed right around here. So we had a little more of a bump up on, on Meta, but then we fell again. But uh, we had a nice bounce. So again, it should be above 40. I still like the setup. I'm going to see here for next week if we get a shot at playing the gap fill, just like on Google, on Alphabet, which was the, pretty much the same setup, and we just got it. So I placed an alert at 222.11. If we break that, I want to take a look at getting on those 230 calls. I was looking at Meta 230 calls, 85 cents. So we didn't miss out on anything by not sending it. I've been keeping an eye on that contract alone since 80 cents. So again, if we break 222.11, I'm comfortable sending those 230s out for next week. That's something I'll be looking at. We did catch that today. Um, I actually laddered that trade. I actually added to that position. So you can see the exit on uh, Meta is here. And again, you can see my cost basis is higher than before, than the actual signal. So again, I got 30%, but you can see my average cost is 192. Here's the actual signal price. Uh, the meta one was 182. So I was 10 cents behind equals right about 10% on my ladder. And you can see I got 30%. I just had uh, more contracts I just added. So meta was a good one. Um, that's where we are there. Uh, Google, we also got towards the tail end of the day, we got 43%, the 110 calls for next week. Uh, we are now at 109.46. I think uh, Google is still good to possibly get back in into next week. Uh, if anything, we'll, we'll trade, we'll try it again. We'll play it again. I don't, I don't mind doing that if, you know, we get a shot. So let's see if Monday we get those, uh, those, uh, premiums reset. Maybe we get a pullback. We can buy into it. But again, Google's a nice breakout. I'm glad we caught it. It's going to go to 110.81 in my opinion. So, uh, after that, it's really, who knows that probably might get us to near that 4,200 S and P 500 level, but Google is outperforming, starting to break out of levels, not seen really since September. So, Alphabet getting extremely interesting here. We're above major moving averages on the daily. If we go to the weekly, you're starting to get to resistance too. Rather, pretty close, not terrible. Uh, 119.95, that's your 100 weekly moving average on Google. Take a look at S&P 500. Look how close we are. Beautiful candle this week. This is the weekly. And again, 4206 is what we're looking at as resistance. I would wanted to buy puts there. Why? Because look at the VIX. The VIX is at 17. Right there at 4,200, I definitely want to buy some puts. Call it out now. I said that on Instagram. Once we get to 4,200, we're looking to get into some puts for a reversal. And again, I'm not saying we're going to get to lows or anything crazy. But again, we're going to take advantage of that imbalance of, you know, everyone just being bullish again, which I'm all for. But again, we're trying to make money every day too. That's kind of the goal. Uh, JPM, we did send out. That is open. It's minus 10%. We got as high on JPM as I think 25% and then pulled back up. You can take a look at the chart. Really what we need to get to is 139.12. Great price action today. How many people were short JPM during the bank crisis? Who knows? But we have a gap to fill here at 142.52. Um, my target really is here. The 100 weekly moving average, great weekly candle. Uh, last time we had a green candle that strong in terms of the price was really the October lows. And we soared for five weeks straight. Maybe that's enough juice for JPM to get us to gap up over the weekend. Maybe we get to that 142.52 level uh, midweek next week, maybe on Monday. But again, right here is the target, 139.86. That's probably the level we'll be taking our profits and we'll let the runner do its thing. Uh, in terms of next week, thankfully, not a lot of news, not a lot of um, important economic data because we don't have a Fed. So we just had the retail sales. So that's pretty much baked in. In terms of next week's earnings, I'll send the calendar out on uh, Instagram and on the blog. Um, Charles Schwab reports on Monday in the morning. Um, Johnson & Johnson, Bank of America, Netflix, and Lockheed, and Goldman Sachs. They all report on Tuesday of next week. We also have Wednesday, Tesla. We'll keep an eye on that. Morgan Stanley as well. Uh, Thursday, Taiwan Semiconductor, Philip Morris, AT&T, American Express, Blackstone, D.R. Horton, Union Pacific. And on Friday, Procter & Gamble, Schlumberger, Freeport-McMoran. 
uh, those are going to be the guys that are going to be reporting. So we'll get you that calendar as we go. So really the most important stuff is out of the way, at least economically speaking. We'll still may have some Fed uh, speakers as we go along. But uh, other than that, a very solid week. Uh, you can see four out of five, we have one open. That gives us a win-loss tally of 80%. Um, just good stuff all around. A lot of good lessons there uh, that we learned this week. And uh, we're going to take that and move on to next week and build that momentum. You know, it's a nice, the first real full trading week of the quarter and of the month since last Friday was Good Friday. So uh, let's keep that momentum going into next week. Next week should be rather bullish. Again, all we're expecting, guys, is 4206 ES. That's your 100-week moving average. If we reject that or we get there, we're looking to play the puts on reversal. Maybe we retest 4150 or so. And that seems to be that line in the sand on S&P. So we're getting close to selling this rally. We're just not there yet. Uh, 41.89 did hit pretty much heavy resistance. Again, starting to get near to that 4,200 level. But again, it reversed, but we bounced back rather nicely for the S&P ES to be rather flat right now. So 41.71. Let's see what we get. Have a great rest of your weekend. I will catch you guys on Monday for the morning note. Cheers.